TV today. Okay, since 6.37, uh, Monday the 26th, we're going to call the meeting of the Webster Planning Board to order. Um, first action items are reorganization. Now we uh, Christella is not here to here tonight. She doesn't feel well. So you can table it, I think, probably for one more meeting if you wanted to. And wait for her and move forward and organize with the folks who are here. It's up to the board. What do you, anybody think? I'll wait one more meeting. We'll wait I one more meeting? Okay, you guys? Yeah. That's fine. Okay. We'll push it off to the next meeting. Table it? Okay. And same thing with the, the next uh, next item. I think, didn't we already agree on the CMRP PC people? Well, I, I, Jason, Jason was appointed uh, as was, part of the Board, board of, of selectmen, selectmen. So I'm an alternate um, right. for the board, so I cannot be appointed by the planning board as well. No, 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 but I thought that we talk, had this discussion last time. You, who, who was going to stay on? Oh, you were going to stay? I, I think I thought I already... So you I'm agreed to stay, it. right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but Christella, uh, oh, was Christella here as well? And she agreed to stay. I wasn't here last week. She but was. I Christella we agreed to stay. Yeah. Yeah, but Kathy wasn't. Kathy wasn't here. So you yeah. actually have to take. Christella said she would continue on, okay. but Kathy wasn't here. So you actually have to have formal nominations. So we'll wait till Christella comes back. Or, or you can, in her absence, appoint her. She's already indicated that she'd be willing to serve. Okay. So Kathy would be your planning board representative and Christella would be your community member at large appointment, which is the other slot right. you get to fill. Okay. And Jason's there from the selectmen. Yep. He's from the selectmen, right. yeah. Okay. Then I'll accept a nomination for Kathy and Christella. You want to make I make that motion. Okay. A second. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion regarding the appointments to the CMRPC? Hearing none, do we have to poll or just all in favor? It, it's up to you. Um, since you're no longer on Zoom, you don't have to, to poll, but if you'd like to as... In that case, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. No opposed? Unanimous. Yep. All right. Thank you. Signature form, everybody did already? Yep. I assume? And the approval of the minutes from the June 28th, 2021 meeting. Chuck? Yeah, I had a couple comments for Ann. And Kathy gave you some tonight as well? Of course she did. But that's good to good. have you back. <laughs> <laughs> that's mine, <all> right? <laughs> In your motion, um, it's probably good form that if you're going to approve the minutes as drafted and edited and to um, authorize me to use the electronic signature of the clerk to sign them. Okay. And somebody could just say so moved and we'll make that happen. Yep. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as edited and approve the signature. Approve yep. the signature, electronic yep. signature. Sorry. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion regarding the minutes from the 28th meeting? No. Anyone? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next item on the agenda, public meeting. Site plan approval and stormwater permit application for 57 Goya Drive. Uh, the, we did receive one piece of documentation, which was Chuck's final peer review letter to, in, to indicate what he had already verbally conveyed at the last meeting, and that all the items from the engineering uh, perspective have been buttoned up and submitted to his satisfaction. So uh, all the documentation has been received and they have met the uh, met Chuck's satisfaction, everything he needed. The lighting. You want to Would go? <clears throat> Except for the, the lighting. Only, the only, uh, to circle back, uh, you guys were talking about the lighting. Yes. With the proposed versus existing. Yes. And um, Brian, the design engineer had a plan showing the existing lighting and you had a little bit of light trespass and I think the thought from the board was that you would conditionally approve it yeah because Brian said he was gonna file a new plan with the with the lights modified correct okay. mm, uh, <laughs> identify yourself please <laughs> exactly uh, for the record Brian Melissi with Whitman and Bingham Associates what do we uh, 
had relayed to the board last month was uh, the, the updated lighting plan did show a small area of existing light spillage over the property line. And I had talked to the lighting guy. He said it could very well be as simple as just moving a shield, maybe changing a bulb, or maybe changing the fixture itself. And what we had asked the board is if they could condition that, that when, when the site guys are in there building a new addition, we'll take a look at that fix fix it while they're out there, and then submit a new plan when the as-builds come in, rather than going running around and doing that right now. Uh, so when the site guys are on there, we can fix that. So that's what we had asked, if the board would maybe consider putting in a condition like that into the site plan approval permit. Okay. Is that, well, that's the way I remember, that's, so that's, that's how we kind of left that issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and we had asked somebody from the owner's rep to come in and talk about the idling trucks? Correct. Matter of fact, that's your first discussion item, but they are connected, so it would all dovetail together. Good evening. Hello. Uh, my name is Dan Prouty. I've been, um, uh, I used to own the land that Goya was on, and I've done business with them for 37 years now. Dan, could you speak yeah. into the microphone? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you. So. Um, it should be more like Mick Jagger, I guess. But anyway, um, so they asked me to come here tonight. The general manager had a death in the family over the weekend, so um, um, so so basically, I've um, you know, it's, it's it's I guess it's a feeling of Goya. We're, we're adding on to the back of the building, and we're trying to you know trying to satisfy everybody. Um, the original building was built. Uh, they moved in in uh, 1990. Five years later, we doubled that. And then 15 years ago, we doubled it again. So um, about 25 years ago, we did have complaints about the reefers. And we've replaced them all with a state-of-the-art, um, they're called the Whisper uh, reefers, OK? And um, y you know, so those are uh, very low decibel uh, levels, and then they 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 park um, they park them uh, on the um, I guess you'd call it the north side of the property, uh, you know, towards the um, you know towards the other industrial park in the garage. Um, you know, as, as far as uh, I mean, we're addressing the lighting, and then everything is going in the back. Now we've had some complaints. Uh, we've We've heard there's complaints about uh, compressors on the roof, and we've got two compressors on the 6,000 square foot office building, you know, which is a small office building. All the compressors for all the freezers are behind the building, and you know, that building is um, approximately 30 feet high, and they're up against the back of the building. And in the new building, it'll be the same thing. So. You know, I heard that someone had said, well, you should put up a sound wall like Dewey Pyle did years ago. Well, what's better than a, star, a, 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 a wall, you know, that's almost 40 feet high? And that's where the compressors will be located. So, um, you know, I'm in the industrial park business. I know people don't like traffic. But also, when these things go to court, it's always you can't interfere with commerce. The town, right here, I've got a 1967 zoning map, and I don't even think Route 52 was even finished then, right? But this is where the town said they wanted the industrial zoning. This backs up to the town of Oxford's industrial park. So we're trying our best, but, um, you know, Goya has been a successful company, and, um, you know, we always, we always tried to uh, get along with the town and the neighbors. So um, I don't know what else I can tell you about that unless you have some other questions. But, um, you know, when Dewey Pyle was there, uh, they had about 300 trucks a day in and out. And right now, I have leased that for Dewey Pyle to IPG Photonics. So... Um, Next year, when the lease is up for IPG Photonics, hey, that could be a, a cross dock again. We don't know what that's going to be, but you know, uh, we're in the industrial zone, and um, uh, I don't know what else I can I can say about uh, you know how business works. But 
I think the only complaints the only complaints that we heard here were the reefers that were idle that were running on that side of the building at night which is really the issue mm -hmm. and you said that they move them to the back but they don't I mean well there's um, there's there's more reefers than there are loading docks okay so I mean you know they 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 fill the trucks and then they have a uh, donkey that moves them here and there so I what I did was I went up um, Saturday afternoon and there were three reefers running over the weekend and they were down by the garage so um, to say that um, you know we're gonna we're gonna move all the reefers out of there I mean you know during the night or, or during the evening and into the night that's when the reefers are being loaded so they have to run and then they you know they go out about six o'clock in the morning I mean Everybody likes to go in the supermarket, and the shelves are uh, filled. And every day they replenish shelves. So, um, you know, so in, in a in a percentage, maybe twenty percent of the truck is frozen food. So that's why they all have reefers. Dan, do all your trucks have reefers? Is there any chance of putting the non-reefers on on the side close to Cudworth, and the reefers on the back back side? No. What what it is is they they all have everyone has reefers. Uh, depending upon where they're going and what the orders are, maybe not all of them are on at night, but I mean, there's, um, you know, it, it, this is, I mean, not, nothing has really changed over the last uh, almost 30 years, except for the fact we have a public hearing, people get a letter and they say, well, I'm going to go complain about something, and then there's been, you know, they, they call the office, someone's been calling it daily or several times a day and you know we go down there and um, you know uh, they, they said hey, we, we can one of them was they said we had a rooftop uh, two weeks ago someone complained that there was noise off the compressor on the roof well uh, and they said it was and they even just specific they said some that's where the roof blew off well we did we had to move a heater back but right this time of year now we're not running any heaters and like I said with the exception of two small units on the roof of the office building, everything's behind there. I have a question. So is there enough room to keep the reefers on the backside away from Cudworth Road? Is that the problem where they can't keep them all in that area until they're ready to leave? Well, <clears throat> like to Mike's point, can they shift how they store those units until they go to move them out? Well, the building as it's laid out, okay? is you get your loading docks in the front. We're gonna have four loading docks in the back, but that's where the freezer is going. So, um, but, you know, like I said, some trucks only have 10 or 20%. I mean, you know, we've got trucks in the morning. We've got two trucks that go to Chelsea every morning, like full. You know, we, we serve from Utica, uh, Utica, New York, up to Laconia, New Hampshire, and down to, um, New Haven or Bridgeport, Connecticut. Are there so, assigned, are there assigned um, parking slots for them, do, depending on the order they go out? Is well, you, you, um, so if they're going the furthest out, they want them to get out first, so they put those in. No, every, everybody generally goes out at the same time. So they can put them really anywhere in that lot. What's that? They could really put them anywhere in that lot when they store them before they get taken out. I know, I know but um, I'm going to say right now, I should have counted them. There's probably... 12 to 15 trucks total mm -hmm. and with this you know with this uh, addition there'll be five more trucks but um, uh, like I said this has never been a problem until you know till now you know how come we didn't hear about it the the last 29 years or 28 years Dan, the, uh, two, the two ladies who um, came before um, before us at the last meeting are here tonight and I believe they had told us this has happened within the past couple of years. Is that correct? Or has it been happening right along? Months. Months, okay. Sure. Yeah, if you want to just take that seat so you can, in case you have to get back up again. Thank you. Hi again, everyone. Michelle Smith. I live on Cudworth Road. 
Sure. Um, so I think the, the main concern that we have is that this uh, noise has been more frequent and audible since about October um, when the, the tenants of 52 Cudworth Road uh, relocated. Um, so that's when, at least for speaking for myself, you know, during the pandemic, I was working remotely. Um, I'm not so much anymore, but during that time, I, I didn't observe for an extended portion any noise. My front office is right in the front, so right along Cudworth. And um, I've, I think I noticed that starting around October. Um, so it was, to me, it was a dramatic change. So I don't know if uh, the certain types of reefers or the refrigeration units changed at that point like maybe some of the um, trucks got upgraded and they're just a little bit noisier or what you know specifically but my personal observation I can't speak on behalf of you know my neighbors here um, you know and, and um, they do they they're at home a bit more I think than I am so they might be able to speak to that better but that's the reason I haven't complained because well I, I certainly hadn't noticed it um, and and I don't mean to be adversarial I'm here you know I, I live across the street I support Goya's expansion I think it's great for the the town to see that additional income coming in from an economic development standpoint. I just live across the street and I want my concerns to be heard by this board and by you as a property manager who I would hope, you know, would want to work with the residents to resolve these issues so that we don't have to come <laughs> in front of the board, you know, and, and do that through the site plan process. Um, so, you know, you mentioned, you know, interruption with commerce. I just want to be clear, it is well within the board's purview to consider the impacts of noise as part of a proposal. I don't know that you understand enough about how the additional volume of vehicles, I'm not concerned about the, the traffic, I'm concerned about how will that affect the noise? Where are those vehicles going to be parked? You know, will they run, you know, is that going to generate additional truck traffic that will be parked in the front, in the side? Is it going to be in the rear? You know, the additional compressor on top of the roof, is that, um, what, what decibel level is that? Could that be located inside perhaps to alleviate that if that's the concern? I'm not saying it is. I, I don't know, you know, that particular piece of equipment and, you know, what kind of noise it might generate. Those are just questions I had about where those elements would be located on the site as part of this proposal. So so that were there to be an issue, the board could also hold Goya accountable to make sure you know, that they did what they said they were going to do on the plan. Because if it's not on the plan, it's so hard to get to kind of come into compliance after the fact. Um, so those are the, the kind of concerns we had related to the noise. Um, so I just wanted to, to clarify that. And thanks for letting me sit. Thanks. All right, to answer that concern, what we can do is we can get the, um, they're all, all those, all those reefers are made by Thermo King, okay? And, um, you know, they're made to a, to a standard. What I could do is I could, I could get the Thermo King people out here and say, um, are there two or three that are out of sync and then they're, they're making the noise? And, um, and then, of course, you know, in, in this addition, the, that's where the freezer is going to be. But once again, we have to load the trucks. And um, I, I can't just say, okay, we're going to park all these trucks over here at the end of the day. I mean, it's especially troublesome in the wintertime when, you know, those trucks got to go out all the time. I don't care how much snow it is. Um, you know, we have a system that's been working for years. So, um, you know, we, we, we can help it if, um, I mean, if we, I, we'd probably have a bigger problem if there's an ice cream factory there. But, I mean, it is what it is. We will, I, I, will, uh, I will get the Thermo King people there. And, um, I mean, over the years we've upgraded it. We've upgraded the trailers. You know, I think when you see the Goya trucks and... Um, and uh, boxes go out on the road. They're always clean. They're always new. And, um, you know, it's not like we're running, running equipment that's, you know, 15 and 20 years old. Yeah, I don't think anybody's questioning Goya's dedication to doing a good job. And I think that, but although they're, those, that was a reasonable question mm -hmm. as to what the noise level is and what's acceptable. 
And I, don't, I mean, they're not questioning traffic, they're not questioning the number of trucks, they're questioning just the noise. And there's three people that have documented that it's gotten worse over the last, since October till now, than it was previous to that. So something happened, whether you know about it or somebody, I mean, something changed, whether it's different reefers, whether it's a different process, whether it's more of them running at one time, and that's, a pretty reasonable expectation from neighbors to understand what that nor noise level is. Is that? Yeah. All right. Well, I, I think the only thing I can reasonably do is reach out to Thermo King, have them come in and check all of them. Hey, maybe there's a couple with bearings going. I don't know. You know, I mean, but, um, you know, but once again, this is a problem you always have when you got an industrial piece of land and you're in the beginning of it and you know um, I've always said to people I mean we had it with Dewey Pyle years ago they were there and people built houses behind them in a half acre lot and at that time the land was zoned industrial. Yeah, we, we really don't need to relive the history but okay. I so, was here. I know um, so but, I mean um, you know. But it, it is a reasonable expectation to understand what's going on at a facility and, and to do everything that you can do. Obviously Goya does want to be a good neighbor and they try to do everything right so what can we do to make sure that that process is followed and what's a reasonable noise level to expect adjacent to a commercial or to a industrial zone and I don't even know what the regulation says does it do you know no well I I know when the when I uh, did go after the last meeting and it was noisy I mean you can hear what's that I did go after the last meeting. Mm -hmm. I drove up there that night, and it, it, they have a reasonable complaint. It's not being unreasonable, so I can understand where they're coming from. And, and w believe me, this board has n does not want to get in Goya's way mm -hmm. and prohibit them from doing anything mm -hmm. that they. I mean, they're good for the town. They're great. Pe they're great people. They're great taxpayers. We understand that. We'll do whatever we can to make mm -hmm. it work, but. From our perspective, we have to be reasonable to the neighbors also, mm -hmm. and I think you know that. Okay, well, one, I will go back, okay? And I mean, the, the most I can promise you is we'll, we'll see what we can work out for a parking plan, the best we can, and I'll, um, I'll, get, the, I'll get the Thermo King people in, and we'll check each unit. Like I said, maybe there's a couple of them with some bearings going and they're squeaking and maybe, you know, maybe that's what it is. But they don't um, get regularly serviced. Beg your pardon. They don't get serviced on a regular basis. Um, or you wait till they break down before you. No, no. You know, they're one of those things. They, you know, they last forever. Okay. You know, I mean, it's like you know, I mean. Um, but they do. They must have maintenance, regular maintenance right. contract. They have filters and replace. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. There's filters and replacement. They do but, that on um, a regular basis. But. You know, I mean, it, it's um, it's like you know, you, you, your car's brakes are good until they start squeaking. You know, right. so yeah, you, know, um, you know, and hey, the, you know, the guy shows up at six o'clock in the morning. He's in his truck and he's going. So, um, yeah. um, but I mean, you know, I think that's the best I can promise you. You know, we can we can you can you know see how we can um, you know without messing up the program how we can you know rearrange truck parking maybe and um and uh you know get the service people in and say uh they which ones are you know which ones are which ones aren't whispering they i think they call it the whisper jet um uh once the trucks things. are loaded once the trucks are loaded from that will will more of the refrigerated stuff be loaded in the back with the new docks now or um, not uh the, the the way that works is usually I, I really okay. Don't forget the question. I mean, this is, I mean but I, I, I if don't we know. can come up with something where once the trucks are loaded, they can get moved to the back in the parking where there's, you know, where it was intended, rather than sitting there idling all night. I'm sure it would make the neighbors much happier than whatever you're doing now. So, and did you have any other questions or comments? No, uh, um, but um, I, I can prepare a. A draft decision that gets you as far as you've done tonight um, it's up to you what you want to do but um, closing the hearing wouldn't guarantee that any future conditions could be discussed 
um, for a decision. So it's up to you whether or not you want to close it, but if he presents more information, um, then it's not relevant to your decision in the future. So you, you'd have to keep it open to take in more information. Okay, can I just say one thing? You know, Goy has been here over 30 years. They've been a good neighbor. I know, you know, it's still a family-owned company, and, um, you know, we'll, to the best of ability, our ability, we'll, we'll try to fix this. Okay. Through the chair, I, I just have one question, not to uh, make, you, or make it us appear that you're jumping through hoops. Um, if you could provide the board with uh, you know, a spec sheet of what those Thermal King refrigerated units are supposed to put out for uh, refrigeration and um, working, having some experience in manufacturing, um, it might be, I would be interested in knowing if additional insulation would be possible to be added to those refrigerated units. Um, making more of a systemic change rather than just, uh, you know, more of a maintenance change, and what if that would be a, um, maybe there's there, maybe there's a change that could be made to the refrigerated units that would be beneficial to Goya and would also reduce the uh, mm -hmm. the vibrations. Um, well, well, that, that's why I'm deferring to the Thermo King people because there must be hundreds of thousands of them around the country, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. Uh, but I, uh, I, would, I would appreciate if you asked that question. Yeah. Those, those questions on top of, all right, which ones need maintenance, which ones don't, yep. because, you know, if we just fix the problem and maintenance mm -hmm. isn't done for, you know, an X period of time, we might be sure back here. What the decibel rating is for those units at a specific yeah. uh, they, they distance, have to, right? They have, they have to. to. Yeah. So, you know, at 20 feet, it should be a certain decibel, and that's, I would assume that there's some kind of cumulative effect when you have more than one, but at least something that we can measure that would be reasonable, yeah. right? Is that? Yeah, based on BTU mm -hmm. or whatever. Well, it's, I mean, the decibels don't always match the BTUs, but all we care about is the decibels, yeah, right? That's, yeah, just to put some number on it so we can. Yeah. Are all the units the same size? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, all the, all the, they've got a couple of short boxes, but um, um, if I remember right, I don't remember seeing freeze, uh, freezers on the short boxes. Those are service things, you know, that go out. What's our um, pleasure here, Paul? Do we want to approve the site plan approval? With, well, with we have to. Of, with the hopes of maybe coming back next month. I think the process. An update on this? Tonight would be either close the hearing or don't close the hearing, but I think we should instruct Ann to go ahead and draft the decision anyway so that we don't hold them up another right. meeting period, you know, providing we can get some good answers at the next meeting from Thermo King and from. Goya with a parking plan and so forth, then at least we'd be in a position to accept that information and then make a decision whether we want to vote on it at the next meeting or not. Does that seem reasonable to everyone? Yeah. And does that yep. sum it up? Yep, perfect. You need a motion to continue to August 30th at 6.30 p.m. Okay. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second by Kathy. Any other discussion? All right. I'm sorry? Um, sure, we'll let you come up. Come on. The name is Catherine Bresniak, and I live right across on Coverth Road. And it's, I just want to say, it's nothing against Goya. I know they've been here. Um, my dad was very friendly with a lot of the workers that lived up there and the truck drivers and even after my dad passed there was one who was very nice helped us with our driveway and stuff it's it was never about that it was it's a very recent issue because I could always have the windows open at night it was it was never this it's more like of a droning of a vibration of, of a feeling that it is audibly loud yes but it's something you feel in your chest it hurts my mother's ears I mean I steal my windows I moved my room but I'm saying I would never, we would never complain about this if it wasn't something that was so severely like different. And that's why I'm led to believe something has changed, whether it's something 
like other trucks because we do see other trucks from other companies that they say there's other it's not us it's other trucks that are idling and we see other trucks leave and there was one parked on the right up on the hill idling with that same noise somebody had to come down the, t the hill and tell them to leave like they're saying like what are you doing you can't sit here and that's exactly what we hear all night and what we feel okay. so i don't know if it if it is like other trucks that goyer are letting park up there that they say but i mean we've only called when it's like been really bad only at night like you know 11 12 o'clock at night and then I'm, I'm a night owl and i'm up late and i hear them they're they're coming out at parade at three in the morning and it's been that way for years i, I accept that and i can i live with that I, I don't care the noise comes and it goes but this is something you can't escape from it's what you feel and we have had to like uproot our whole lives at home like just i mean kind of like what, what do you do at this point if nothing's ever going to get better do we have you know you, you think about having to move because it's something that is so different than over the 30 years that my mom has lived there it's, it has never been like this before okay i just want to say thank you but Fine. i mean it's nothing against goya they're great people and they are good for the town and but it's just like i appreciate you kind of working with us but you know if, if it is a truck if it's like though now they're telling us it's something on the roof it's like we just we don't know it would just kind of getting like a run around and thank you for trying to like narrow down to find out what is different well we don't know what's different we're not doing anything different than they did before so we don't know is some parking trucks in the viking industrial park behind us it is we we did take a ride up like past the marina and you can see over the land and it it is coming right from the goya property course we don't go because there's security well, maybe that would be a question that we could address with the with the parking plan yeah, no, and, I, I know and you're truck busy. movement throughout the uh, throughout the evening so Chuck you had a uh, yeah excuse comp? me mr. chairman uh, I just did a quick Google on uh, thermo King and uh, although you can't believe everything you read on the internet it says it has a the whisper quiet function is a is an automatic function so it turns itself on and off through use of a sensor or something. So maybe those units are sensing that they don't need the whisper quiet mode when they're parked in that location or something. It might be something to take a look at, so. Okay, thank, thank you. you. I, I just had one more thing that popped in my sure. head. Have they ever like cleared a lot of trees in that area too that could potentially? Nothing that would affect there because oh, it's all okay. on the other side. I wasn't sure yeah. where. We have been getting a lot more hot weather, so. The yes. things would have to run longer because it's been hot. Yeah, but they're complaining not since enough. October. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. not October. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, we had a motion and a second to continue the meeting and to direct and to draft a decision. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous, Ann. We look forward to working with you and getting it resolved. We're sorry it's taken a bit of a time, but we'll we'll get through it. We'll do the best we can. We'll, we'll look forward to getting the information from you as quickly as possible. Oh, I, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next order of business is odor control at 30 Worcester Road. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Hi. I'm Richard Young. I'm the director of operations at Cure Relief at 30 Worcester Road. Hi. Um, we are, I know this is about the odor that is coming from the building recently. Um, I took over Cure Relief in Massachusetts in November, and it's something we have been fighting against since November. But um, I can't get into the details, so I actually brought my facilities manager here that he can kind of get into the details of what we've done and what we're going to do going forward. Okay. How's it going, everybody? I'm Matt Murphy. I'm the facilities manager for Webster, Massachusetts, Care Relief. Um, so we brought in engineers from two different companies. One is EEC, and the other is um, Train, uh, at both uh, out of this area, 
um, to help get our arms around this problem. Uh, what we've done so far is we attempted to switch to all carbon filters for all of our units, but due to the high humidity of what we're working with, uh, that was a failed attempt. We sealed, resealed all of the inside of the new portion of the building, the expansion of the extra 55,000 feet that they did. Um, back, we started running that back in October, which is also when I started as the maintenance facilities manager there. Um, so the next step is, we I've brought a copy if you'd like it, but we just uh, signed off on work that we're going to do to have all of our down blast fans on the roof upgraded to up blast fans and all vents uh, extended up an additional 12 feet to dissipate uh, any orders that are coming off the building before that they can make it into the town. I've been in production for a very long time. This is kind of the first time I've had to do smell mitigation, so we've needed to bring a couple of engineers on site to really help us kind of figure out how to do this um, because it is obviously potent and we take it very seriously. Um, we, uh, in addition to um, doing the down blast fan or the up blast fans, um, there were two units that we identified as being improperly placed over their holes that was causing some air to leak out, as well as um, two existing roof vents that were from, uh, I can't remember what the. Uh, old company was KLT KNT, um, that were supposed to I think have been capped when when care leaf took over the building or whatever it was before care leaf uh, bought them um, so I think that was also like something that was missed maybe during the initial startup so we are we we've we're moving forward. We're just waiting on the last of the up blast fans to come in. We'll be doing all of that work next week. It'll be completed by next week. Um, if that doesn't work, um, the engineers feel very confident that it will eliminate this problem. But if it doesn't, we have a more extreme um, measure, which will be uh, adding very large up blast fans all along the edge of the building closest to price chopper which would dissipate all air um that would be on days when the wind is blowing towards town uh before it, uh so that it can like dissipate before it hits anybody And, and this is, I'm sorry, this is something we also did in our Amesbury facility in Amesbury, Massachusetts, and it did work. Uh, we put the larger up blast fans. We were sharing a property with other companies that were complaining, um, and we were able to get rid of the smell that way. Yeah. I'm happy to provide a copy of the quote um, if you guys would like it, if it's necessary. Um, I don't know. Could you just tell me what's the difference between up blast and down blast? I, I Sure. So, like, the ventilation leaving the building, which, uh, for the most part, everything is supposed to be enclosed, like we're supposed to be recycling our own air, um, minimizing any sort of fresh air intake, but also what's leaving the building. But there are stuff, vents for, like, our bathroom, say, and, and areas like that. And so uh, the fan is actually, like, mushroom shaped and it's blowing down onto the ground or onto the top of the roof so it's keeping the everything kind of low and so we will replace that with something that will actually eject it straight up into the air so in theory it will go above the town instead of staying low and then on a breezy day bring it into the town yeah, it seems on the days that it's not breezy is the worst not yeah breezy days. <laughs> yeah those um, high humidity days where it just hangs there, you you get out of I yeah. Mean, it's terrible. Yeah. I think yeah, identifying also the slightly misplaced uh, HVAC units that were allowing air to escape. Um, I think sealing the building helped maybe a little bit, but um, I think it's kind of an overall. Uh, it's just such a a potent smell that just having small leaks uh, really. 
I don't think we'll be able to completely get it from escaping the building, so the best thing will be to push it up beyond where it can affect people. Uh, through the chair, what is the odor? Uh, cannabis, sorry, it's a cannabis grow facility on 30 Worcester Road. Oh, I, know, I know what the facility does. Uh, I'm just saying, what, what's co what is the odor uh, a harmful chemical that the board needs to be worried no, it's about? it's just the smell of just cannabis. Just the smell of processing the cannabis? Yep. So it doesn't pose any public health no. hazards? No. Okay. It, yeah. And did you want that quote just to have it, or do you not care? I, I think it'd be good to have something for the file, for the record. Okay. More than just the meeting minutes. So anything you can send me would be would Oh, be sure. Good. I have a hard copy, but I can Perfect. also email it to you. Yeah. Okay. When Great. do you think the work will be completed? Uh, this next phase uh, of one, two, three, four, five, six will be done by uh, Friday of next week at the latest. And okay. um, if we receive any more complaints from that, that's when we'll talk about doing the wind wall, essentially on the on the edge of the building. But the engineers thought that was maybe overkill at this point, and really su strongly suggested we start with this and then go to that so that we're not drawing tons of electricity in addition, because I know we already have a pretty big draw on the town. And you already had success with this in Amesbury, you said? Yes. That's correct. Yep. If, if you could um, just send me an email when the work is complete so we have the benchmark of when, when the work is done so that uh, we, we know of any future problems where, where we so, left off at. So yeah, just absolutely. a quick email, we're done. Yep. And, uh, the this company said that they're happy because they know about the issues um so they're happy to provide a letter that the work has been completed if that if that helps as well okay perfect that'd be great thank you right. and, thank you and ann will be the judge she swings in there every morning just because she likes the smell so <laughs> i've smelled it on sutton road not this year <laughs> last year i did for sure thank you for coming in i appreciate it thank you thank you, thank you. Uh, next order of business is the proposed marijuana retail delivery services from 70 Worcester Road. Sure. Actually, you want to slide the chair over there? That'd be fine. No, you can take that one. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you. If you could just identify yourselves for the record, please. My name is Jensen Mejia. I'm the Director of Operations for Florencia uh, Cannabis Delivery. And my name is David Ulian. I'm an attorney at Vicente Cedarburg. Okay. The floor is yours, I guess. Why? Well, yeah, we had a little bit of technical difficulty, so we are without your, your slides, but I know some of the board members had viewed that information on the website before the meeting. Okay, um, if you'd like, I can, we certainly we have a copy here. I can run through the information on them. Okay. Uh, while you can't see them, I can at least quickly go over it. Um, so the name of the company is going to be Florencia LLC. It's going to be a cannabis delivery business based out of uh, 70 Worcester Road at the old um, Kmart Plaza. Uh, the, essentially, I'm the founder of the company. And um, we are, we're striving to become the go-to cannabis delivery business in Massachusetts. Um, ultimately, our intention is not to really deliver in this area, uh, but more towards the uh, Worcester, Boston area. Uh, if there is a need, the intention is to sort of see if there's a need in the town for delivery, because uh, Bolt is there. We could make a deal with them to deliver their product. Um, but that's not what we're looking to do. Is they have their business. We're not trying to touch it. Um, we would like to deliver out of the town, but ultimately we do need a location to base our business out of, um, so that would be Webster. We'll also like to point out that the deliveries are already happening, so whether um, we get to come into the town or not, the deliveries are happening. They, they can come into the town and deliver. What we're trying to do is just find a, a place for us to house our operation, or where, um, excuse me, uh, headquarters. And um, we think uh, Webster would be a phenomenal place to do that. 
Um, again, my name is Jensen Mejia. My experience is really in financial services. I used to be a licensed stockbroker, a uh, bunch of FINRA licenses. I graduated from Worcester State um, last year, 2020. I went late. Um, with a business uh, business degree. So again, it's right up my alley. I feel confident that this is something I can do with the help of Vicente Cederberg. Um, you know, we can certainly put it together. Uh, ultimately, business objectives would be to, right now we're going for the, um, the provisional license. So all, that's what we're going for right now. Um, if we can get the provisional license, money comes in at that point, we feel very confident we'll be able to put this business together. Uh, Florencia will partner with cultivators, product manufacturers in order to uh, get product which will deliver to consumers. Um, there is a, an issue with odor here. We will not have that issue as we can only deal with finished product. Um, it has to already be sealed and ready to go. Uh, any order that's packaged, that's loaded into a vehicle has to already be designed for an end consumer. They have to have already paid. We're doing no cash, uh, so we don't anticipate that to be an issue as well. Um, all orders loaded into the vehicle in the morning, they'll be out of town, uh, and then at the end of the day, once all the orders are completed, they'll come back into the town. So as far as traffic, uh, we don't anticipate to have a big footprint there as um, we're going to start very small, five vehicles max, uh, load them up first thing in the morning, 9 a.m., get them out of town. Uh, so, and, uh, and another business goal we have, essentially, myself, um, is to get, gain more knowledge about the industry. Um, that we do expect or would like to grow, um, but ultimately this is an opportunity that's being provided by the Cannabis Control Commission with a three-year exclusivity. Um, I'd like to start here, maybe grow, go into an additional license, a retail license, um, but that's a goal in the future, nothing that we're looking at now. Uh, quickly, just a delivery license background. On November 30th, 2020, the Cannabis Control Commission approved a final delivery operator license. That's what we're going for. Um, it, was on, it wasn't until May 28th of 2021 that they actually allowed us to apply. So right now there are none of these licenses out there. I certainly hope to be the first one. I believe that the framework in Webster is ahead of everyone else where your license is already zoned properly and um, it seems to be a closer group of people to speak to where the only other place that I think is anywhere close is Boston. Mm, but that's a huge bureaucratic process. You have to, it's, it's complicated, I believe. Um, Vicente was, Cedarberg was helping me with that, and ultimately we think this, is, this, is, this makes more sense. It's cheaper, it's a lot more room, there's parking. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a better opportunity in my mind. Uh, the next thing would be uh, just order delivery, only 21 years of age or older. Uh, orders are, are prepared. The, the orders will be placed online, so no storefront. Um, vehicles will be loaded in the beginning of the morning and then they'll be out of there. All vehicles have to have two delivery agents per vehicle. Uh, delivery agents must wear body cameras that are on at all times in conducting deliveries. Uh, delivery agent has to stay with the vehicle at all times the deliveries are being conducted. So one person goes does delivery, one person stays at the vehicle at all times. Uh, once the order has been delivered, order completion will be logged and recorded. Uh, once all orders are attempted, and delivery agent, the delivery agents will return all undelivered items back to um, the, the storage facility, the warehouse. Uh, so that's the biggest difference between this and like a courier. We do get to hold our own product. Um, for safety measures, my um, younger brother is a Marine. He has over 10 years of experience. I have asked him to join the company if we are able to put it together, and he is very interested. So I'm certainly hoping that it's something that I can extend to him, an offer I can extend to him in that regard. Um, he does have experience with um, security. Uh, he has private, private security experience, which I believe is going to be instrumental to get this thing going, is security and securing the vehicles and ensuring that we have eyes on, uh, on the entire operation at all times is going to be very important. Um, and I do trust him to get that done for us. Um, vehicles will be tracked via GPS tracking system at all times. It will be done from the facility. Um, and there will be two-way communication at all times with our drivers. The commission has a very specific requirements as to how we secure the product in the vehicles. Um, so there has to be a lockbox um, within the vehicles, cameras in the back, cameras in the front. Again, two agents. So we're going to take the security aspect of this very seriously. Um, the last part here. Yeah, so the last part would be the location. That's 70 Worcester Road, uh, Unit 210. I believe that Radio Shack was there previously. Um, the loading area is in the back. I did take a walk through that area with Chief Shaw. Uh, he was comfortable that it can be done one vehicle at a time um, with very little concern. 
Um, I thought that maybe we could do it a little further back because there's parking back there. He said he wasn't comfortable with that. We want to do it right by the building. Um, the vault is already there. They have a little area on the left, and it works for them there. So he said he's comfortable right behind the building, one at a time, got him out of there. Um, we also identified behind each of these buildings is like ways you can get out of the plaza. Um, we can be in and out without anyone even knowing that there's an operation there, um, which is actually another important part of this. The Cannabis Control Commission does not want us to have any kind of identifying uh, markings on our vehicles, um, on the building itself. So it's almost like we're not there. And that's what we're hoping to we're hoping to not have an impact on anybody or anything in that area. Um, again, as if we're not there. Um, and this just, again, the security requirements that will be in that warehouse. Uh, the Cannabis Control Commission will come in and make sure that this thing is up to code and that the center theater will certainly assist me with that. So we do feel com comfortable and confident that we will be as secure as possible um, in the town of Webster. Um, that's, that's the presentation. Okay. Deliveries are being made now, but how, how do they get made now? So they, the Cannabis Control Commission came up with two licenses. There was a courier license and a delivery operator license. Initially, when I was kind of going after this, I've been going after it for two years now, the courier license was the only thing out there. Courier allows us to make a deal with an established retailer and deliver their orders for them. But we cannot hold our own product. Um, so that's out there already. So there's, uh, I believe, Netta. Uh, has a deal with one of these carriers. Only one company has a license. So they are doing those deliveries. Med medicinal or medical deliveries are already happening with everybody. Uh, so if you have a card and you have a retail establishment and you can get that license, you can do it. Um, but ultimately, we expect more players to come into the market. The delivery operator, I'm hoping to be the first. Um, but those carriers are getting going. The commission is trying to get more of those guys on the road um, as we speak. Gotcha. Now, my, my question is, is, you know, you did a great explanation as far as what you're all about. Now, is the police chief aware of this operation coming to Webster, or, and do you know of that? Well, yes. Um, part of what they've been doing uh, in advance of submitting an application to this board, this is sort of a pre-application meeting on their behalf, is they do have to get a, um, get a sign off from the police chief. And the fire chief uh, will also be chiming in as well. Um, as you remember, during the hearings for the vault, yep. there was some conversation about the configuration at the back of the building and access to, you know, to um, fire, you know, equipment back there, the, some of the standpipes and whatnot. So there will be an opportunity from a site plan perspective for both of those um, departments to comment on site-specific um, criteria. Um, he's, he's met um, ever so briefly with, well, not so briefly, but he did have a, a team meeting with our senior land use staff, which included the building commissioner, the police and the fire, and the town administrator, and myself, and I had suggested they come here and see if you had anything in particular that you thought should be addressed during the site, special permit site plan review process. So this is just the first step towards coming before you formally, and the police fire will have comment on that. Okay. My other question is, is obviously your trucks are going to get loaded in the morning. At what particular time during the day, and I don't know if I should be say, asking this, what time does your product get delivered for distribution? So the, um, and I just wanted to add on the last question, I did take a walk through the area with uh, Chief Shaw, and he showed me what you mentioned as far as not blocking the, um, mm -hmm. there was an area they don't want blocked. So we did go over that. He feels comfortable that, comfortable that it can be done out of that area safely. Um, and I apologize. Your question again? What particular, I know your trucks go out first thing in the morning. At what particular time during the day does your product get delivered for distribution in the morning? Sorry about that. So we are contracting with OnFleet, and they're the, they're the go-to for this type of operation. It will depend. So we will have the ability to set up an area where we'll go to, and then essentially it's just as the people purchase, they get to take time slots. So they'll have a specific time slot that their order is going to be delivered in. They get to track the vehicle, but only within a certain time frame of that delivery window. So it's all day long. So they'll leave in the morning, we have some orders at 9.30, and it just goes on. The software will allow me to say, once, that order, once they stop at that order place, it's going to be about five, ten minutes. I decide how long that's going to be. And then immediately, it, 
kind of puts in the next order. So it's all automated. The routes are automated. Um, His question was receiving product. Oh, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Right now, we don't have specific plans on that. Okay. The intention was to speak with Volt and everybody else and make sure that it's not going to interfere with anything because they need that drive area yeah. to do their delivery. So ultimately, we have to figure that out with the folks there, but we, should, we intend to do that. Okay. And if I recall correctly, during the, the hearings for um, the Vault, uh, one of the considerations that the police chief had pointed out was that they, they don't want the general public to know when the deliveries are, are being sense. made, that some of it is a security issue. Yeah. Mike, I would just, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it was on that same line of, so you're, you're actually building part of it is going to be like the warehouse part of it. So you're going to keep supply in your space. Yeah. yeah. And we, that'll get delivered. They'll fill up the shelves in diff with different products. And then you will, once you get the orders, you'll pick them for the delivery. Correct. Yeah. Ultimately, though, it's, it's locked. So only, only employees, only people that can be there will be there. Um, and uh, there is like a, there's a bolt area, so there will be a locked area where things are stored. Um, but that is correct. So it's just like a picking operation. And it, so no processing, no repackaging, no, no, no repackaging. everything comes in packaged and. Yes, sir. Okay. Correct. So is the delivery? I'm just thinking of the physical area there where they have that back driveway with the stairwell and the doors. Is it a shared receiving area with the vault? Correct. So we'd have to kind of figure out what's the best way to get in there and get out. But I, I mean, we don't expect it. it's going to be too tough. Yeah, there's not that many deliveries. No. Uh, <laughs> and I, I would just, oh, I'm sorry. I would just also add, this is similar to other types of retailers where they typically have product being delivered from cultivators and product manufacturers a couple times a week and preferably during off hours so it doesn't cause any additional types of traffic. So this would be a very similar type of operation where a bulk uh, wholesale order from a cultivator would be scheduled on a certain, probably two, three days a week, depending on demand, and then scheduled at uh, off-peak hours to not try to um, impact any other robotic businesses. Yeah. Jason, um, you had a question? Through the chair, uh, what other uses are present within that plaza? You've already mentioned the vault, and I'm specifically thinking about um, uses where that could cause children to congregate or, you know, traffic that area. Are we, are we looking at, uh, I, I'm, I'm not familiar with that area after um, the Kmart moved out, um, but. but. So right now there's a uh, vault there, there's a laundromat, um, the Divine Nails, I believe there's it is. A, yeah, there's the nail a facility, right? Salon, I believe, and then um, to the right is a sort of abandoned U-Haul. Uh, no, no, they're just coming in there now. Oh, there's, so it hasn't been operational yet, mm -hmm. but uh, um, yeah, to the right side would be a U-Haul place. But the dollar store is over there. Yeah. We, um, we drove by earlier before the meeting. I don't believe we saw any sort of... Um, no, there wasn't any. No, there. there's, there's no... Okay. Well, All I right. spoke also um, with the police chief, and he said that that's one of the biggest things he's noticed. There's no... People don't congregate in that area. Um, I think is because of the clientele that goes in there. It's generally older folks that are... That can right. afford this stuff, but uh, he said that there's no people don't congregate in that area. So with us, people wouldn't know we're there. There's no reason for anyone to go over there. So we wouldn't add to any okay. any kind of foot traffic. I know one of the beaches. Um, I'm not sure if it was Revere Beach or whatever. Um, people were calling up and ordering alcohol. I read that that was being delivered to the beach. Come to find out, the people that were going to pick up this alcohol were under 21. And you know, I, I know that when you call up you're going to ask if you're over 21, 21 or over. Now, how are you going to actually know that when you go to deliver the product? Yeah, the commission has very specific guidelines for how this runs. We have to confirm their identity beforehand. So they have to upload their, their ID. The address has to match the address we're delivering to. When we get there, we have to confirm that ID belongs to that individual. Um, ultimately, I can't say what they do with it after that, but we have to make sure that that person's ID matches the order and that it's that same address. They're over 21. That's our responsibility at that point. Um, I, I wouldn't risk my business to go beyond that. Okay. And Thank you. Just, just to add to that, there's a process called pre-verification where if you want to order delivery from any delivery company, you have to first, before you can place an order, provide a copy of your ID, and that will be kept on file. And then when the delivery person actually makes 
the delivery, it has to match the exact same ID that was used to pre-verify and can only be delivered to an actual resident. So no dorms, no um, subsidized housing, no, no beaches. It, it's only to the physical residents that um, the person ordered and it has to match up exactly with what they had used to pre-verify before they placed their order. What is that ID made up of? Is it the license? Yeah, you, know, they, you take a picture of your license and you upload it to them. Oh, they okay. So that's what it is. see it before okay. they actually enter the okay. order. Okay. Right. So that's so when you deliver the order, they double check to make sure it matches what it is. Okay. I just wasn't sure what, what it was that they were. It doesn't necessarily have to be a driver's license. It could be a passport, any any sort of government issue okay. ID. That unexpired. Shows that, you know, photo ID that shows, unexpired, that shows mm. that you're at least 21. So, so to be clear through the chair, um, it's illegal for you to deliver to a public place at this time. Um, would you be open to a condition that prevented you from doing that in Webster? Um, to a public it, place in Webster? I'm, I'm thinking th um, the beach. Um, that, well, that would be. We can't deliver. Part of the, part of the yeah. is going to right, right, but but the laws change, you know, over yeah. time. <laughs> Um, oh, no, absolutely. I mean, we would never want to deliver out in the open. Um, right. We see the issues there as far as security concerns. Okay. Um, I, we absolutely would be more than happy to sign anything saying we would never do anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, we see the value in keeping this thing indoors. Okay. At least I do. Um, and that's the only place I'd want right. to deliver to. Okay. Yeah. We used to have a pizza delivery jet ski and on the lake, and uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't want to show my bias, but I don't know if You I just did. gave him a new idea. Yeah. Yeah. That. <laughs> the jet ski delivery guy. <laughs> um, Ann, anything else? No, when the, when the, uh, you know, the formal application comes in, you can talk more at length about it, but this was a good way for him to get a feel for what your expectations are. So. Okay. I, I just have one question. So there are a number of requirements that are pretty standard um, for special permits and site plans, and we were just curious if the board would be open to certain waivers, just because this is just a. It's an existing system. facility, and you already have the part. We, exactly. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. just, so, um, you can take a look at anything, okay. but you can take you can look at the project files and the decision that were filed for the vault because they required they requested a waiver from the from the site plan requirements for the same reasons that you're up against as well. I do want to um, you know, remind Mr. Moore, and he will, will not be eligible to vote on the matter as an, as an abutter, but uh, you can, he can participate in all the proceedings. You just can't participate in the vote. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, anyone? Well, thanks for coming in. We appreciate the information, and good, good luck moving forward. And staff report? Uh, actually, yeah, we've got a couple of things. Um, we're moving forward with um, trying to complete out the as-built plan reviews for not only 5 Cudworth Road. I don't know if you got a chance to read through um, the peer review letter that CHA produced, uh, but there I got in touch with the project engineer and he promised me he was going to get that done and get things ready to go so that you can have the final site plan um, approved for your August meeting. Okay. I have been told that also 30 Worcester Road was going to be completing their as-built plan for review by CHA and Chuck and I have been nudging them along but we're hoping to get that done and in front of you as well in August and close the loop on those two projects. Okay. Uh, Zero Douglas Road stormwater permit there's been a lot of poking to move that along. Uh, we have had a submission uh, with an outline a time frame of what's supposed to be done and her response to some of the items that were in the permit. And um, we're still not entirely satisfied that some of that work can't get done before September 15th, which is when she ultimately wants to go out there and stabilize the site. So uh, Chuck and I are going to strategize on how to um, get that done sooner rather than later. Okay. If that means bringing her back before you all to have that conversation. Please don't. <laughs> well, we will, we'll try our hardest. <laughs> and then uh, some of the other ones that we talked about. Um, we did refund the peer review money for the Cudworth Road parking storage area. That has gone out. And those are all of our big sort of project updates for now. Oh, there is one other thing. Chuck and I are meeting with 
Mrs. Sharetti uh, next Monday to she's trying to find some way to close out that project and as you all know it's it, it's a lot of moving parts and she's trying to find the easiest and least painful path out because apparently um, she was not left with a whole lot of documentation uh, to understand the complexity of what she's up against. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. If I can help you at all, let me know. I'll be more than happy to. Well, you all will be probably thrilled to know that um, I have been through meeting minutes dating back to the 1960s, <laughs> and I have done a deep dive on everything that was ever brought before this board. A lot of you prominently featured in those meeting minutes, uh, Chuck as well. And I have put together an outline for her lawyer of the things that need to be done to, to complete it to, the, to your satisfaction and to um, move it towards town acceptance, which we know is a Board of Selectmen act. But yeah, it's, it's, it's messy. The deep dive, did you look at Camille at the same time? Oh, yes. I've had a lot of fun with the past meeting minutes. I bet. <laughs> well, I'll be interested to see that one. Yes, and so that I'm not sure if Chuck wants to add to any of that, but that those are my updates. Um, no, Anne Anne stole my thunder on on everything. The only thing I can think of is um, the Batten Street Solar Facility. Uh, they did clean up the entrance to the site, and the only the they're still experiencing a lot of erosion out there and they said that they were going to hydro seed a lot of the different well they were going to hydro seed all the disturbed area I, I believe and they they hadn't so um with what we've experienced in the last 30 days it's like impossible to do any stabilization so i can certainly <laughs> right, understand right. But and so you know they've got some erosion controls that need some work and that sort of thing and so ann and i have been kind of I've been writing letters and Anne's been poking them via email, so. Okay. My, my, question for the, my question for the board is that we typically put on the website everything up to the final decision. Would it be helpful for you in those project files if we were to include a folder called inspection reports so that you can go and, and see the progress? I mean, I keep them all digitally and Chuck does too and I know he sends you copies, but is that kind of information helpful to have on the website or are you, you satisfied with what's happening now? I mean, I, I get them direct from Chuck and I just put them in a file that says exactly that. So. I would like it. I, no. I like more Yeah, it's, it's nice to have it all in one place. Okay. Yeah. I just look through my emails if I need to look yeah. at them. <laughs> but it'd be <laughs> nice to have it all, me, all together. That's an awful lot of emails to look through. <laughs> but I will, I will start putting the inspection reports for all your projects online. So if you go to the solar project, you'll see a folder that says inspection reports and they'll all be there. Great. Then you don't have to pull my emails out of the recycling bin. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't do that. Uh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Um, is, what's the story with U-Haul? Are they um, still progressing? Did these, did these guys say there's some, there were some trucks there um, up at the Kmart Plaza? No, it was just oh, the signs. Oh, there were just they signs. They put up a banner ahead of time, and they weren't supposed to. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the U-Haul folks um, had I applied just... for signage, and it, they were rejected because the town does not allow advertising for off-site businesses, and they're not open in town, so they're not technically on site. And uh, Ted had gone out there and told them to stop, and they haven't, so... That's on my list of things to do as we go. <laughs> so what's the status on that, uh, Andrew? Is, they, is it hopeful within the next month or two? We're that? still waiting to hear from the Attorney General's office, which uh, we should have a determination from them by mid-August. So there's only change. Okay. And, then, and then apparently the town clerk is required to advertise for two more weeks to the general town to give them an opportunity to say, we don't like the Attorney General office decision, so. <laughs> After you voted for it, yeah. Yeah, government is not built for speed. I mean, yeah. this is ridiculous. Uh, but we're, we're hoping by the end of August, it's all said and done. And they will be coming to you. Uh, they're, they're starting to work on all of their materials to submit to you. So that's a, a big project that's coming down the road for you. Okay, excellent. Anything else, anyone? Hearing nothing else, uh, motion to adjourn from someone. Make that motion. We have a motion to adjourn. I'll second. And a second. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.